Okay, I want to give an example to motivate eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Um, and this is kind of a classic example of a predator prey system. So take a second and read this, um, this text here that I've put. Um, you could pause it for a moment if you want, or point is we've got, we're in eigenalia. Uh, we've got rabbits living in the meadows. They reproduce quickly. We have foxes that eat rabbits. They need to eat rabbits to live. Um, and so we start with 30 rabbits, 20 foxes, and we're letting R of n and f of n represent the number of rabbits and foxes respectively. So for example, this says that R of zero is 30 and f of zero is 20. And it's the population after n years, R of n is the number of rabbits after n years. And this thing, this system here is called a discrete dynamical system. Basically, if we know the number of rabbits and foxes at year n, we can find the number of rabbits and foxes at year n plus one, right? So for example, r of one is four times r of zero, which is 30, minus two times f of zero, which is 20. So that's 120 minus 40 is 80, and f of one, so the number of foxes after one year is number of rabbits plus number of foxes is 50. Okay, and the idea probably you can sort of guess that this has to do with the, re this four right here is sort of to do with the reproduction rate, right? Um, that if there were no foxes, the rabbits would just reproduce, they just like multiply by four the number of rabbits every year. But the minus two of n is, says something about how the foxes are eating the rabbits, right? The minus that's capturing that. And then the number of foxes grows basically by how many rabbits they eat. So eating lots of rabbits helps the fox population grow. That's what this term is right here. And I guess otherwise somehow they would subsist and just stay the same population if there were no rabbits. Okay, so um, this is called a discrete dynamical system. The idea is you would like to, it's called discrete because by the way, we're just measuring year by year. We're not measuring like moment to moment. It's not instantaneous. There are dynamical systems that are instantaneous where you use differential equations um, and derivatives, but this is considered discrete because we're just going step by step. Um, and so there's some, you know, uh, coarseness to the model, but it's still a good way to model populations. Um, and we would like to know how many rabbits and foxes there are after five years, 10 years, 100 years, right? So we would want to keep going. But if we did that, we'd sort of have to plug into the equation each time. It's recursively defined, right? So we'd have to plug into the equation each time. Like we can plug 80 and 50 back in for r of 1 and f of 1 to get r of 2 and f of 2, and so on. Um, and that would be, get, get kind of tedious if you want to get up to 10 years or 100 years, especially. It gets sort of tedious. So the question is, how can we, can we figure out some way to compute this more quickly? So first, I want to put things in terms of linear algebra. So let's rewrite in terms of linear algebra. And the first thing I want to do is let's make a population vector. So P of n is gonna be the vector um, R of n, F of n. So it's the vector made up of the number of rabbits at year n and the number of foxes at year n. So we call this a population vector. And then um, this system kind of, it is linear, right? It's linear in P of n. So in fact, if, um, let's just call the matrix A, the matrix, if you look at the coefficients of the equations up above four minus two, one, one, then the population at year N plus one is really A times the population at year N. 
right? So it's just matrix times vector. If you just think about factoring, um, you know, if you just factor this right-hand side of this system as matrix times vector, then that's what's happening here. So it's nice because it's rewritten it this way. So e.g., for example, we know P of zero is uh, 30, 20. And then this says P of one is four minus two, this matrix times 30, 20, which is if you compute it out, it's the exact same computation that was up here, right? And so we get 80, 50. And you can keep going, P of, if you want to know the population after two years, we can multiply again. Right, that's A times P of one, which I think is 320 minus 100. I think it's 220 and 80 plus 50, 130. So there's 220 rabbits, 130 foxes. So the population is going to grow um, after two years. But what if we want, uh, what is, you know, the population after 10 years or after 100 years? Again, this is sort of a tedious calculation. Um, we can notice, by the way, that for example, P of three is A times P of two. So we could just multiply that. But that's A times A times P of one, right? Which is A times A times A times P of zero, which by the way, I should call, give us a name, I'm gonna call this P naught. I mean, I know it's not much different from P of zero, but a lot of times people just call that P naught, which is an initial initial population. And so you can sort of guess that in general, um, P of N is actually A to the nth. We want to multiply the matrix A times itself N times times P naught. And so computing this is sort of equivalent to computing powers of a matrix, but that's also quite hard. Um, you could check, for example, here that for A, um, you know, if A is this matrix four minus two, one, one, then A squared is, this product, which, oh, it's uh, probably, let me just my head, 14, uh, negative 10, 5, negative 1, something like that. Let's hope that's right. Uh, I think right. So then I think you could, for example, compute P of two a different way. You could also compute this as 14 minus 10, five minus one times the initial population 30, 20. But notice it just gets computationally tedious. Um, or not just not pleasant. I mean, a computer can do it quickly, but uh, yeah, I think you can check that actually does give the correct answer. So, um, so this is tedious. And really just copy, and if you think about doing some real situation where you've got like a 50 by 50 matrix and you're trying to model something in the real world that's delicate, this could get really, could even get computationally difficult if you have a more, uh, a more complicated situation. So how are we gonna deal with this? Um, well, I'm gonna tell you, so I'm gonna pull something out of thin air and it's going to be very nice. And then the point is that that's going to be the thing that we want to find. Those are going to be what's called the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So let's consider the following two vectors. Consider V. I'm going to take the vector 10, 10. And W, the vector 20, 10. And, you know, again, I'm pulling these out of thin air. So don't. Uh, feel too weird if you're not sure where these come from, but let's consider um, A times V, right? If we actually multiply our matrix 
4 minus 2, 1, 1 times 10, 10. What do we get? Well, we get 40 minus 20, which is 20, and 10 plus 10, which is 20. Oh, we get 20, 20, which is 2v. So av equals 2 times v. That's kind of nice. In fact, I'll write that over here. A times V equals two times V. So it's actually something that's kind of simple. Do the same thing with W. Let's multiply A by W. Take a second and do it. You really should pause the video and do it yourself and then check and see if we got the same thing. But I get 60 and 30, which is three W. Right, that's three times 2010. That's kind of exciting. Uh, so somehow this multiplying by the matrix, multiplying A by V or W just does something nice. It actually just scales the vector. It doesn't do anything more complicated than scale. Whereas notice when we did the same thing with 3020, this is not, 8050 is not a multiple of 3020, right? We did this right here. That was nothing particularly nice. But this is nice. Um, and also, just because of the way I set this up, notice also um, that P naught, which is 3020, P naught is actually V plus W, right? If you just add V and W together, you get 3020. Okay, so now let's think about. So what is, um, let's just say, what is P5? What's P of five, for example? I claim we can compute this now without actually doing this times the matrix each time. So P of five, we know is A to the fifth times P naught. But I want to write that as A to the fifth times V plus W which is a to the fifth V plus a to the fifth W. But each time we multiply by A, we just double V. Each time we multiply V by A, we just double V. So if we think about this first term right here, that's the same thing as multiplying, but with my A five times is actually the same thing as multiplying by two five times. So it's actually two to the fifth V. And very similarly, Multiplying by W five times is the same as three to the fifth. Multiplying W by A five times is the same thing as multiplying by three five times. So that's actually two to the fifth V plus three to the fifth W. And that's kind of amazing, right? Because we actually get the answer pretty much immediately. So, I mean, the numbers aren't lovely, but um, I didn't have to do any matrix multiplication or anything. We had 32 V, which was uh, 10, 10. You know, the population grows quickly. So three to the fifth is 243. <laughs> I'm not going to say these numbers are so nice, but it's sort of interesting that we can actually get, you know, uh, well, oh my God, 320 plus, uh, well, I didn't, yeah, you get some, but you get something that's kind of nice, right? I mean, you could do it pretty quickly. Maybe I'll do it real fast. Um, 243 times 20 is 4860. Just to consult a calculator to make sure I get this right. Uh, 4860 plus 32 times 10, which is 320. So I get 5180. There. And 320 plus 2430 is 2750. By the way, these rabbits and foxes are reproducing at alarming rates. But so that's so that's amazing, right? So like we didn't actually, without any matrix multiplication or without any matrix times vector, uh, matrix times a matrix, or vector times vector calculation, or sorry, matrix times vector calculations. 
we were able to actually find this and we can do the same thing um, for getting P to the 10th or P to the 100th. I mean, the numbers get ridiculous, but you know, if you just want to think about it, P of 100 by the same logic is two to the 100th times 1010 plus three to the 100th times 2010. And so it just seems like it would have been insane to try to figure that out um, just by multiplying by A over and over again. And, you know, this is a perfectly good way to express it. So knowing, having found these two random, these two vectors V and W actually solved the problem for us. It actually let us find the population going out sort of arbitrarily far if we want, right? I mean, the numbers get more, more ridiculous where it's not really, um, it doesn't really make physical sense anymore but maybe the meadows of Eigenalia go on forever or something, and there's plenty of grass and plenty of everything. But, um, but yeah, so this, is, this should be amazing. Uh, I do want to say, you know, so, okay, the point is that, um, that V and W were very helpful. And remember, we had A, V equals 2v. So these were special vectors that only scaled the input. It didn't, you know, most times you multiply a matrix times vector, you sort of, the vector ends up pointing in some other direction. But these just scale, they, they scale their inputs. So A scales V and W, but doesn't change their direction. And that's the thing that's nice here. That's what ends up making this computationally nice. And there's a name for this. So we call, let me just give you this, uh, yeah, this as name. So we call V an eigenvector for A. And we also want to specify that what it does is it doubles. So it's with eigenvalue. So the scaling factor is called the eigenvalue two. And similarly, W is an eigenvector for A with eigenvalue three. Okay, and so that's actually the terminology we use for these things. These is a vector that just gets scaled by a matrix, not pushed in a different direction, or the way the three Lou Run Brown videos say is they don't get pushed off their span, right? A times V is just scales it by two, A times W just scales it by three. Those are called eigenvectors with the specific eigenvalue that goes along with that eigenvector. And that's the terminology. And so the real question is how did I find V and W? Where did V and W come from? And um, that will be the topic of the next video is actually how to find these eigenvectors and eigenvalues that will help us. So hopefully that motivates you as to why it's a good idea to to think about these things. Okay, I'll stop there.